Hi, Mike Kent, Introduction to Visual Basic, ITSE 1331, and I'm going to go over the last of my three examples on list boxes. This one is just called simply list boxes. Let me get it launched here so we can take a look at it. So in this program, I've got a list box called list stuff, and I've got some buttons that will let me add stuff to the list box by, you know, whatever the user types into the text box is going to get added. We've got a delete button that's going to take whatever the user clicked on in the list box and remove it from the list box. I've got a clear all button that will, first of all, pop up window and say, are you sure? But then if they say yes, take everything out of the list box. I've got get current, which is going to get one item in the list box that clicked on and pull it into this label just to show you how to access uh, an item in the list box by using code. And then finally, I've got a total button that's going to loop through the list box. If I have five items, it's going to do the adding five times. If I have 50 items, it's going to loop 50 times. So let me run the program here and show you what it's doing. I'll hit start. Let me pull this down here to make it a little more comfortable. I'll add 42, add, let's add 1,000. And finally, let's add 5,000. So as I'm adding them, I made them look a little fancy. I put a dollar sign and a comma, I put them in currency style with two decimal places. Uh, I can click on something and hit delete. If nothing is clicked on when I say delete, it gives me an error. If there's nothing in the text box when I say add, it gives me an error. If I say clear all, it says really, yes or no, I'll say no. I'll hit the total button. That adds up to $6,342. I can click on this one and say get current, and it pulls it into the label here. So that's the functionality of this program. Let's look at the code. And let's start by looking at the add button. So on the add button, what we want to do first is do some error checking. First of all, we make sure they type something into the text box into txt num. Then we're going to do a try catch to make sure it's a number because what we're putting into this list box is values, is numbers, so we can add them up. And then finally, if we get past all that, here's the line of code that adds it to the list box. So what I have to do is say list stuff, that's the name of my list box, dot items dot add. We're going to add it to the items collection. What am I going to add? I'm going to add des num but turn it into a string with a C in currency format. So that's going to add that string with a leading dollar sign in two decimal places to list stuff. So that's pretty good. Now let's look at the delete button. Now on the delete button, we got to start out with some error checking. First thing we got to do is say, is the selected index negative one for list stuff? If list stuff selected index is equal to negative one, then the user has not clicked on anything and there's nothing to delete. Now, if it's not, it's going to go to the else. And what are we going to do? We want to get rid of this item. If the user clicked on the first item in the list box, selected index is going to be a zero. Remember, it starts out at zero. The second item in the list box is going to be a one and then a two, and then a three. So if I have four items in the list box, it's going to be zero, one, two, three. So what we're saying here is remove at that position. Remove at zero. Remove at one. And where are we going to remove it from? We're going to remove it from the items collection. So here's the line of code. For, for the list box list stuff and its items, remove at this location list stuff's selected index. Okay, so I'll put a breakpoint here so we can look at that in code later. I'll put a breakpoint here for add so we can look at that later. Let's look at the clear all button. Okay, so clear all is pretty easy. We do a message box saying, are you sure you want to blow everything away? Yes or no? If the user says yes, then we say list stuff dot items dot clear. That empties out the entire list box no matter how many items are in it. So let's go back to the code, went to the form window. I'm going to run the program. 
I'm going to type in 100 and say add. Now it's going to trigger my code. So the first thing it says is, is there something in the list box? Yes, there is. So I'm going to use my debug key F10. It's going to skip over that if statement. It says, try to turn it into a number. It did. So then finally, we're down here to the add. And you can see we're adding a 100 to the next available slot in the list box. So I'm going to tell my program to continue. Now you see we have 100 right there. Now I've changed my mind. I just clicked on the 100. I want to delete it. So I'm going to hit the delete button to trigger that set of code. So right now, first thing it says is selected index a negative one. No, I'm clicked on item number two. So it's going to skip over the true part. It's going to go down to the remove at. It's going to remove item number two. It says remove at two, position two. And that is the last item in the list box right now because we had three items. So it's zero, one, two. Boom, it's gone. Now we can see my 100 is gone. Okay. The other two buttons I want to talk about are the total button and the get current button. So let's start with total because I have to use a for loop to repeatedly add up each item in the list box until I've gotten to the end of the list. If it's three items, if it's five items, if it's 50 items, if it's a thousand items, I have to keep adding until I get to the end of the list. So let's take a situation. I'm going to actually open up Excel here, which I have a little set of data set up. I've got my list box, list stuff. In it, I've got 100, 200, 500, and 1,000. So the 100 is at selected index zero. It's at index zero. It's items zero. Okay. The 200 is items one. The 300 is items two. I'm, I'm sorry, the 500. And then item three is the 1000. And my count, there's four items in this list box, but there's zero, one, two, three. So remember that. Now I'm going to run the program and, uh, well, I'm going to put a breakpoint on the total button, but before I actually click on the total button, I'm going to put these four sets of data, these four items in the list box, okay? So let's do that. Let me go back to the program code and I'll run the program. Oh, let me double click on total and I'm going to put a breakpoint in total and I'll explain what total's doing when I hit the breakpoint. I'm going to run the program. Let's clear all to get rid of everything. And then what was it? 100. Oh, I still got my breakpoint for add. So I'm going to click here and get rid of my breakpoint for add, get rid of my breakpoint for delete, and tell my program to continue. So now I have 100. Then I'm going to put in a 200. Then I'm going to put in a 500. And by the way, I can just press enter because I set this button to be my default button. And then finally, I'm going to add the 1000. Now let's hit the total button so we can see what's going on and how we total things up. So in my total button, I'll get rid of that breakpoint to make things a little easier to see. I've got a for loop. And what a for loop does is it's going to repeat the code inside of between four and next is going to get repeated however many times we tell it to repeat. So in this case, I'm going to say 4x equals 0. That's actually going to take my variable 0x, which is just an integer, set it to 0. And it says 2 end count. Well, end count is when I want to get out of the loop. So look what I did with end count. I said end count equals list stuff dot items dot count that's going to be remember from my spreadsheet that's going to be a four because I have four items in my list box and then I say minus one because I want to go through this loop for items zero through three zero one two three okay so it sets X to zero it gets into the body of the loop. I only have one line of code in here. And I'm going to say, go get items x. Convert it to a decimal. 
add it to the total. So this is a new function. This function takes whatever, takes a string and converts it to a decimal and it understands dollar signs and commas. Decimal.parse does not like dollar signs and commas. It will roll over and die. So we're going to use cdes instead. So right now, what's x? x is a zero. So I'm saying go get 100 and convert it to a number and add it to the total. So total zero right now. After I do this, now you see we got 100. It's going to say next x. Now when you hit next x, it automatically adds 1 to x. So x right now is a zero. As soon as I do this line of code, x became a 1. It went up here and said, has x gotten greater than in count? No, it hasn't. It's only a 1. So now we're going to get list stuff, items, what item? Item 1. So item 1 is a 200. So it's going to get the 200 and add that to the total. So as soon as I run this line of code, now we got a 300. Next x. So now x is up to a value of 2. Well, has 2 gotten greater than the end count? No, it hasn't. The end count is 3, so it's going to stay in the loop. This time it's going to go get items of x. x this time is a 2, so we're going to get the 500. Okay, We're going to add the 500 to desk total. So now my total is up to 800. We've got to go around one more time and get that 1,000. So next x, when this runs, the 2 is going to become a 3. So is 3 greater than the end count? Has x exceeded the end count? No, it hasn't. x is 3. End count is 3. That just means we're on the last time through the loop. It's going to get item sub x, item number 3. Now item number 3 is the 1,000. It's going to add that to the total as soon as I hit F10. So now my total is 1,800. It's going to go next x. x right now is a 3. When it does next x, x becomes a 4. And since 4 is greater than 3, it drops out of the loop. So you see how x ended up with a value of 4? Now all I've got to do is take the total, which is 1,800, turn it into a string, and put it into a label on the screen so the user can see it. And I'll tell the program just to continue now. So there's my grand total, $1,800. Last of all, let's look at get current. If I click on the 500, I want to be able to get the 500 out of the list box and put it into this label. If I click on the 100, I want to get that one out of the list box and put it in this label. So let's go look at the code for get current. And in get current, I'm showing you three different ways to get the current value of a list box. I can just say list stuff dot text because remember a combo box that was a combination of a list box and a text box and text boxes have dot text right well guess what list boxes have dot text too whatever the user clicks on gets put into dot text and that's a string so all I got to do is put it in the label current. Now the other way I can get to the current item in the list box is list stuff dot selected item. That's the item they've clicked on. Now I need to turn that into a string. Oops, I just did a drag and drop. I need to uh, turn that into a string so I can put it in the label. Now finally, the most complicated way is I can say get the currently selected get the current selected index. So if they've clicked on the first item in the list box that's going to be selected index 0 and I say go get that item I'm saying get this item right here that is selected index 0 okay that is that's that's item 0 I'm saying go get item 0 go get whichever item they've clicked on I've still got to turn it into a string and then I can put it into the text box so if we watch that run well I showed you that I can take that, put it in here, I can total up, I can add something, I can get a new total, I can clear all. So if you understand all the functions, all the code in these buttons, 
you've got list boxes and looping down. That's what you really need to know from Chapter 7, okay? Thanks a lot. That's all I got for you. Bye-bye.